Hello, I showed you how to create a post in WordPress in the previous video. Now, I will guide you how to control basic functions of post screen. If your WordPress interface is different with the one of default block editor in this video, please install the classic editor plugin, or see our other video of basic post screen functions with classic editor plugin. Here, I focus on the default Gutenberg block editor. In fact, WordPress has a variety of tools to control the publishing process. Firstly, concerning the publish attribute, there's a lot more to the publish meta box than simply the publish button. Concerning the visibility of post, the default is public, so you'll rarely need to touch the settings. A setting that might come in handy is the checkbox, that says stick this post to the front page. When you have a default WordPress blog page, that does not have to be on your front page as the wording suggests, the normal state is for a post to gradually get pushed down the screen by newer posts, until finally it disappears into archives when the screen quantity limit has been reached. However, there may be an important post, that you'd like to have taken out of that normal flow and remain at the top of the list. Checking this box will do that, therefore the name Sticky Post. Because Sticky Post is not visible without clicking the edit link, it's easy to forget that it's here, under visibility. Password protection means a visitor must enter a password to view the post. Concerning the private status, I've never fully understood the point of this setting. If chosen, it means that the post technically is published, but only administrators or editors can see it. In other words, even if you have subscribers logging into your site, they cannot see private posts. To make it more confusing, administrators and editors can see posts even if they're drafts, so I'm not sure what the setting is meant to do. Concerning the published option. The default is to publish the post immediately, and most of the time that's exactly what you want to do. But as you can see, there's the ability to set the date and time to anything you want, and that can be handy in certain situations. Remember to use the time function when you schedule a post. Everyone thinks about what day they want it to publish, but often forget that timing can be important. From your website's statistics, you can get a feel for when people tend to visit, try to schedule your post for the time in the future, when they're most likely to return for new material. Concerning the revisions. By default, WordPress keeps every revision you make, and that could be well into the double digits depending on your editing habits. However, there are plugins that enable you to control how many revisions are kept, which are mentioned at the end of the lesson. When you click the browse link for revisions, you're taken to a separate screen. The default layout of this screen is to have the current content on the right, and the most recent revision on the left. At the top of the screen is a timeline of all revisions, and as you drag the indicator along it, the content in the two boxes changes, always the more recent displays on the right and the older on the left. In addition, differences between the two versions are highlighted, the right version displays in green and the left in red. The blue button of restore this revision at the top right refers to the version on the right. In other words, your decision will always be whether to restore the version that's shown on the right side. The only exception to this is when you first click through to this screen. In that case the current revision is on the right, and the restore this revision button is not active. It's only when you start dragging the timeline indicator to the left that the button becomes active, because now there will be a revision that you can restore. By default, the timeline indicator is a single blue circle with two arrows, and you're always comparing the two revisions next to each other. If you want to compare revisions far apart in time, you need to check the box that says compare any two revisions. You now have two separate timeline indicators, and you can select a from revision on the left, and a to revision on the right. Again, the restore this revision button refers to the revision on the right. In other words, click the button, and WordPress makes the revision on the right the new current version. Secondly, the format meta box is visible when you first install WordPress, because the default themes make use of it. However, it's entirely theme dependent and may not always be visible. 
WordPress has designated a set of names for post formats as standard video. You need to understand these are just names, how any particular theme lays them out or even uses one or more of them is completely open. Thirdly, now briefly consider how categories appear when there are child categories or subcategories. You can see the child category indented under its parent. The category that the post belongs to is the one checked. Fourthly, tags are another way of organizing posts and helping visitors find what they need. Don't ignore tags. People tend to remember about categorizing because a post must be in at least one category. Because tags are not mandatory, they often get left out, yet they can be as important for search engines and helpful to visitors. There is, however, one sense in which a list of tags is presented to you, and that is when you begin to enter a new tag into the meta box, WordPress automatically matches any existing tags to what you start typing. You can enter multiple tags at one time by separating each word or phrase with a comma. After you enter a tag, it displays below the box. Beside each tag is a circle with an X clicking the circle deletes the tag. Fifthly, concerning the featured image attribute. Typically, the theme does not give you specifications for sizing a featured image, but here's how to rarely get caught with insufficient sizing, always size any image to at least 800 pixels and no more than 1900 pixels on the longest side before uploading to WordPress. WordPress creates smaller versions for you to use inside posts or as thumbnails, but if you have a good quality, large original, you'll be fine. Just don't upload directly from your camera, pay attention that a 100k image will fill a computer screen. There's no need for 500k images, let alone 2 megabytes or more. Let's fix the featured image now. After you upload a featured image, you see its thumbnail in the meta box along with a link of remove featured image. Clicking that link simply removes the image, and you're left with a link to set featured image. Notice that the featured image does not appear in the body of the post. It's used, depending on the theme, for places like listings of categories or at the top of the full post. Sometimes, it will be a small thumbnail and other times a full-sized version. Then, that's it for the default meta boxes you'll see on a WordPress post screen. There are more, hidden from view, that are covered in the next videos. And as always, there may be more post meta boxes, depending on what theme you choose and which plugins you add. I finished here the video, if you find it useful, subscribe for more video. Thanks and see you soon in the next videos.